This recording is a collection of unintended indiscretions before microphone and camera. It is intended as a sympathetic tribute to the members of the radio and television industry who have been the victims of these classic boners. We turn back the clock to the early pioneer days of radio, to what is considered the granddaddy of all fluffs. Harry Von Zell, veteran announcer, was introducing the chief executive to millions of radio listeners who awaited this important address. Let's listen. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Hubert Heaver. Announcers are human too, and some of them, despite their professional training, can lose their perspective. August for the best, best bread and rolls. <laughs> oh, good luck. And when you go into the store tomorrow, ask for August Brothers for the best, best bread and rolls. <laughs> you have ever tasted. I knew that had to happen one night, friends. We will switch you to the 16th tee, where we will show you in slow motion, Arnold Palmer, U.S. Opium Champion. I blew it. The rumor that the president would veto the bill is reported to have come from a high white horse souse. Here is an incident that happened at the expense of an unwitting and innocent contestant. And now before I ask you our first question, what do you do for a living, my good lady? I'm a maid and I take care of a large family. Uh, how large a family? Four boys, three girls, one adult, and one adulteress. This is KTIW, Texas City. Uh, Texas City. Children on radio and television are unpredictable at best. Listen to what happened when a little child was asked. How did your parents meet? They met when they were roommates in college. <laughs> the floodwaters in Connecticut are receding. All train service has been reestablished. The good weather news for tomorrow is clearing and fair. And here in the metropolitan area, all ferries are operating normally. Listen now to this classic moment from an audience participation program. Mrs. Pruitt from Texas, excuse me a moment, ma'am, while I make contact with Mrs. Louise Jacobs in Detroit, Michigan. Hello, Mrs. Louise Jacobs. Hello there. How are you, Louise? Fine, thank you. Well, I'm happy to hear that, Louise. How's everything in the Motor City? Oh, everything's all right. Good. Does your husband work in the automobile industry? He's working in a machine shop. He is? And what does he do in a machine shop? He's a tool maker. Uh, how long have you folks been married? 32 years. 32 years? Yes. That's a mighty, mighty long time. Do you have any uh, 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 children? Nine. Nine? <laughs> Ma'am, your husband's not a tool maker. He's a producer. <laughs> That's wonderful. And how did you meet your husband? Uh, I met him at the box social. At a box social? Yes. What sort of a box social? Oh, church box. Oh, oh you mean where everybody brings box, lu box lunches? Yes. And then they bid. I, that's an old, real old-fashioned custom. The yes. girl brings the box and the man bids on it. Is that the idea? Yes. And wh what did he pay for your uh, your little uh, <laughs> package that you brought? <laughs> Sponsor for us right now, you know that. Is. <laughs> well, I bet you had a good time anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's been awfully nice speaking to you, Mrs. Jacobs. They're in Detroit, Michigan. 
Several years ago, on the Lux Radio Theater, presided over by Cecil B. DeMille, there occurred what is probably one of the most talked about incidents in radio history. So come back several years with us and listen to this closing announcement as it was made by actor Joseph Cotton. Tune in next week when your Lux Radio Theater presents the rollicking comedy success, The Major and the Minor, starring lovely Joan Fontaine and Hollywood's newest sensation, that new talented personality, Sonny Tubb. Here's a bargain you can't possibly piss up, pass up. Boy, I re really blew it up that time. A very gracious and popular television star got herself into this amusing tangle. I know that I was asked to accept this award for Senator Kefauver as a housewife, because I think that that's what Senator Kefauver did more than anything else in bringing the Senate Crime Investigating Committee into the home, into the kitchen, and giving us all an idea of what was happening right here in New York City. And I know that luckily I was sick the first day of the hearings, so I spent uh, three days in bed enjoying Rudy Halley. <laughs> I must say, I, I got to know his every move so very well. <laughs> no. Wait, wait a minute. But no, what I meant to say is that I missed... <laughs> I really, you know what I mean. It's low overhead that does it. So always shop at Robert Hall where prices are high and quality is low. All right, all right. And now for our next contestant. What is your name, sir? Uh, Jack Friedman. Will you step a little closer to the microphone, please? Uh, well, right, what's right. the name again? Jack Friedman. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. And where are you from? From Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. Well, welcome to Sense or Nonsense. Now, you have chosen for your category the sense of sound, That's right? right? Yes. Now, you know how we play. We're going to give you certain sounds to identify. And now, here is your first question. For $10, what is this sound? Now, listen carefully. All right, now, what is it? Oh, that's very familiar. Very familiar. Come on, come on, you got 10 seconds, you got 10 seconds, I'm sure you know. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's... All right? That's Big Ben and Westchester A.B. <laughs> next selection, I'd like to do a medley of old Stephen Foster's favorites. Among them will be Jeannie with the light brown hair, my old Kentucky home, and my asses in the dark, dark ground. <laughs> you stupid idiot. It's not my ass. It's masses in the cold, cold ground. Oh. And in the world of sports, Yogi Berra, a great Yankee catcher, was accidentally hit in the head by a pitch ball. Yogi was taken to the Fordham Hospital for x-rays of the head. The x-ray showed nothing. On a Man in the Street interview program, a young lady was asked the reason why she was in New York City. Let's listen to her classic answer. I'm getting married next week, and I'm getting my torso ready. Several years ago, David Ross, Dean of Radio Announcers and Diction Award winner many times, introduced the Latin American troubadour Tito Gazar in this fashion. Let's turn back the clock and hear this classic moment. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Tito, guitar, and his guitar. Some bloopers are made by sound effects departments. Let's listen to a well-known dramatic show as they perform the story of Stanley and Livingston and see what can happen when sound effects go amiss. <laughs> Beyond the headwaters of the Nile, Stanley continued his search for Livingston. Dense jungle growth and the ever-present danger that set sea fly made the journey more hazardous. Supplies were getting low. The natives have almost reached the breaking point, when suddenly in the distance they heard the sounds of a village. Millions have listened to and enjoyed the great symphonic programs by maestro Arturo Toscanini, one of the greatest conductors of all times. 
but not many have heard this priceless, unguarded moment from a broadcast rehearsal. And here's some news of local interest. Our neighbors over in Columbia, Tennessee, the largest outdoor mule market in the world, held a jackass parade yesterday headed by the governor. Steve Allen, one of television's best-known performers, makes a practice of conducting ad-lib interviews with people in his studio audience. On one of his late evening programs, he chatted with a woman and awarded her a large salami as a prize. Oh my goodness, Steve, that's almost as big as my husband's. <laughs> I mean, as big as my husband. <laughs> A remote is a broadcast that originates away from the station. On this annual Christmas show, children waited to hear a remote from Santa's studio at the North Pole. Let's listen in. And now, children, as part of our annual Christmas party, Uncle John is going to contact Santa Claus. Thank you, Miss Christmas. We'll try it now. Are you standing by, North Pole? Come in, North Pole. Come in, North Pole. Come in, North Pole. Santa Claus. <laughs> That's his cue. I wonder why we can't get it. I can't understand. Maybe we should try it once more. Come, Come in, Santa Claus. Come in, North Pole. Have I got a line? Have I got a line? <laughs> uh, I wonder where? why we can't get through it. Where are you, Santa Claus? We have last year. Santa Claus, where are you? And stay tuned for the late movie, Alexander Dumas' immortal classic, The Count of Monte Crisco, starring Robert Donut. Children are unpredictable, especially on television. Listen to what happened to Maury Amsterdam as he quizzed a five-year-old girl on his daytime show. Uh, say, little girl, uh, what happened to your front tooth? I lost my tooth while I was sitting on a toilet making uh-uh. The practical joker is found everywhere, even in the radio and television industry, as this announcer found out on the first day of April. And the bill goes to Washington next week for the president's signature. Uh, here's a bulletin just handed me from the wires of the Associated Press, Washington, D.C. The White House has just announced that it's counting on all of us to make our victory gardens a success this year. New developments and fertilizers ensure a bumper crop for everyone. Let's get those tomatoes and cucumbers underway. Be sure to have a good supply of humus on hand. Your victory garden is your share of... Say, what the hell is this? <laughs> April Fool! Even popular Dave Garraway is not immune to early morning fluffs. And uh, remember, no bathroom should be without it. You'll find dial soap a refreshing addition to your schlub or tower. Let's go back to the year 1942 and listen to a war newscast from BBC in England. And the ration board has announced that within the next few weeks, there will be an increase in the allotments of certain food commodities. 
There's good news on the war front tonight. From North Africa comes word that Allied troops have stopped the advances of Hitler's Penzi divisions. Good afternoon. This is your Barnes Department Store Shopping Counselor. After working hours at 6 p.m. on the 6th floor, models will display gowns half off. Sometimes the reason for a blooper isn't understood by the listening audience. On one hot summer day, an engineer came into the control room wearing nothing but a pair of bathing trunks. The announcer spotted him just as they went on the air. This was the result. A Philippine Airlines passenger jet and 24 persons hijacked a communist China. <laughs> a Philippine Airlines passenger... <laughs> <laughs> and once again, back to the Larry Glick Show. Don't forget, tune in tomorrow morning to listen to Phil Cook. He's that clever fellow who plays all voices on his own program. So tomorrow, start your day with laughter. Tune in on Phil Cook, the man with a thousand vices. Let's listen to a news item heard on the 11 o'clock news. And here is a late story about that fire that broke out on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. The blaze of undetermined origin started in a peanut store on the boardwalk and spread to other stores in the vicinity. The fire threatened the famous Atlantic City Million Dollar Steel Pier. The peanut store front was completely demolished and boardwalk passers-by helped themselves. Tonight, there are many boardwalk moonlight strollers with hot nuts. You've just heard There's No Business Like Show Business, sung by the robust voice of Ethel Murmur. The late and beloved Dr. Walter Damrosch, Dean of American Conductors, took great pride in his music appreciation series broadcast to students in New York schools. But even Dr. Damrosch was not infallible. Let's listen. Our music appreciation program concludes with Tchaikovsky's Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies, followed by the delightfully gay music of Mozart's Magic Fruit. Spoonerisms, the misplacing and mixing up of syllables, are one type of blooper that plague performers. Listen to this commentator on a daytime fashion show. Now our next creation is a necessity for sun worshippers. A beautiful two-place peace suit. And that's the weather report from the International Airport here at Anchorage, Alaska. Now I'll take a leak out the window to see if it's freezing outside our studio. Many strange things happen in a studio while the mic is live. Here's a case where the announcer picked a weak and wobbling folding chair to sit on as he introduced a nightly news show. The National Broadcasting Company brings you H.V. Kaltenborn Views the News. And now, Mr. Cal... Oh. I'll be a son of a bitch. The wife of a famous golfer was being interviewed. A simple question brought this classic answer. I most certainly am superstitious. I wouldn't think of letting him play an important golf tournament without kissing his balls. 